So whether you love PlayStation or hate PlayStation, it seems their mid-season refresh and their Project Q is just around the corner. Well, not at least maybe the Project Q, but not the PS5 Pro, but they are coming and it seems we have more details, more footage about them. So are you interested? Are you excited for a mid-season refresh? Are you looking to ready to spend, I don't know, maybe around seven, eight hundred dollars for the PlayStation 5 Pro? Because it's not going to be cheap because the stats or the specs, as I should say, that they are actually showcasing here, they are leaks, don't forget. So do take these with a grain of salt, are pretty beefy and could actually uh, cost you an arm and a leg. So let's get on with it. So first thing first, we're going to look at the Project Q. Now, this has obviously haptics, which we've already known about. The price tag that was revealed in the court notes was $300, but we do have a $199 price tag here. Uh, obviously, this is a mock-up. This isn't official, or is it official? One thing we do know is that it will be running Android. So the version that you'll be remote playing with isn't a native app that's built specifically for this platform. It's an Android operating system. Now, why is this interesting? But if it runs Android, it's going to get hacked the living crap out of. If it is locked, that is to make it unlocked. And at that point, you can run Game Pass on it through cloud streaming. Isn't that going to be brilliant? So uh, you'll finally be able to play Xbox cloud gaming on your PlayStation, whether Jimmy likes it or not. So we do have some specs here, new images of footage leak online, breaking down Project Q. I've got some video footage of that as well. It looks to run Android, meaning you could probably run various Android software on there, including emulators, depending on whether it comes with an SD card slot and how much memory it actually has. Uh, the previous roundup was that the news um, should be sub $300. This comes from the FTC. It'll have dual sense functionality, eight in screen, remote play focused, no further specified details. Um, running Android also means you'll probably be able to install other apps, including Game Pass, which is pretty sweet. It actually increases its value for me, so I'm actually quite happy with that. Uh, Sony is potentially in early talks with Qualcomm for a handheld, according to uh, Qualcomm SVP, Alex Finn, Qualcomm make mobile chips. So this was something that was happening on June the 2nd, so it's probably related to this. Now, if we look over here, we can see that we've got like a couple of screenshots of the OS actually running. As you can see here, this is the back being opened up. So not much going on here, but well, obviously the screen's on top, so they've just removed the screen, but it's like a teardown that they're doing. This looks so bad, no one is buying that. Someone is going to get fired. But more importantly, it's this video here, which I'll probably get a takedown notice for this video. So I hope you enjoy it while it's already up. As you can see, he's moving around. It's got touch enabled devices. He's showing basically that he is actually pressing the stuff and it is reacting. So it is running a version of Android. It just looks like a mobile phone being jammed into it. Honestly, it doesn't really look like anything that impressive, but you know, it will do what it said on the tin and it will, uh, you know, sell like it wants to. But it's really interesting and, you know, if it can run and, if, you know, if Android is on there and it has an SSD card somewhere to go in or someone can create a way to expand the storage. Now, this has Android OS confirmed, Qualcomm chip inside confirmed, which means it's depending on the Qualcomm chip could be quite powerful, which means uh, Android apps and games could potentially run on this, making it a very lucrative device at 200 bucks. So. There is that. Next up, we have this over here. Now, PS Vortex, who's a very, very avid PlayStation fan, extremely uh, avid, I should say. He's uh, found this image again from TCMFG Games. Uh, PS5 Pro will be day one cop for me. Screw 8K, all I need is native 4K at stable 60 FPS. You're not getting that, my dude, even with the uh, Pro. You'll get close to it at least you're not going to get it. Uh, he doesn't want uh, with or without ray tracing. It'll, it, if you can get 4K60 on some games, it's not going to be with ray tracing. Now, as you can see from this image here, it is a uh, $499, which I do not believe for a second. Most of the reports I've seen it saying this is going to be $799 USD. 
Um, the world's most powerful console. Uh, we have that tag again. The last person to have said this was Xbox, and it pretty much brought them the worst luck in the world. Let's see how that's going to fare out for Sony's platform. Uh, this uh, is again running AMD's uh, chip in there, but this time, unlike the RDNA 2 point, whatever it's running on the PlayStation 5, this apparently is going to have RDNA 3 and Zen 5 tech set to uh potentially be used inside the ps5 pro now we did have a bit more information on this i believe it's down here the heads we can see here rumor project trinity playstation 5 pro dev began early 2022 playstation internal code name project trinity playstation 5 pro apu code name viola playstation 5 pro technical specifications decided uh, AMD 30 workgroup processor up to 60 compute units. PlayStation 5 Pro memory RAM, uh, GDDR6 at 18 gigabytes data transfer speed of up to 72 gigabytes, which is pretty, pretty sweet. Um, custom RDNA 3.4, higher frame rate at 4K, improved hardware accelerated ray tracing. So all of these are really nice, but they're not $500 not for a long shot up to you know 23 over 23 teraflops of graphical output don't forget i think the xbox had what 13 teraflops so this is like almost double of what the series x can do i i, I cannot see this being kept at you know the price of $500. I'd be very surprised. Maybe $800, $900. That looks more realistic to me because this is a beefy piece. You know, it's a beefy console. But if they can keep it at $500, that's amazing. Man, this is going to be next level. Given the general idea of specs, any idea of the price range, minimum five. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. All of these are dreaming. They're all dreaming. It is not going to be $500. It's going to be way higher. Uh, you got a faster CPU. You know, your, your CPU is faster. Your GPU is faster. You got better RAM. You got better storage. Everything's better. So that's where we're at with this. Both the actual uh, PlayStation Q and the PS5 Pro are actually looking really impressive. The, PS4, the PlayStation Q actually picked up more interest for me the fact that it's running android which means i can run my streaming platforms on there like geforce now and game pass you know it's, it's it's great it means that i can kind of play all my games on one thing i'm kind of doing that already on the steam deck but i'm a sucker for gadgets but only within the correct price range at 150 to 200 i think i'll pick one up but anything more than that it's just not worth it for me but the ps5 pro if that does materialize if that does come out Depending on the price point, I may pick one up. At least I'd want to pick one up because, well, we're gamers, right? We want to play the games the best way we can. Not all games come out on PC. And if they are available on PC, if, my, if it's not a multiplayer game, my first choice is to get it on PC because it generally just will run better. But time will tell. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And until the next one, remain legend.